Hello guys and welcome back to TNT Madness. Today we are going to be looking at my mini LAN at Archer Cannon. So this thing is insane. It is essentially like my 1.8 LAN at Archer Cannon which went down extremely well but I made that six months ago. And this thing is pretty much better in every single way. It stacks more sand, it's more compact, it's much longer range. It's just better in just about every way. It's more resource efficient. And this sort of cannon is something that you would use for pretty much any base. You could use it on 90% of bases unless you needed some insane one shot to do it faster. But I think not everyone needs that. They need cannons that are just a bit smaller but still pack a punch and do all that. And this thing does that. It can stack 10 sand which isn't that much but unless you are raiding a massive base it is probably all you need. It can shoot 10 chunks plus so that is insanely long range for something this tiny but that's because of all the dispensers we've got but that is really really useful because it means you can shoot through like 50 walls without this thing dropping off in range so that's really useful and it can slab bust and scatter with ease there is no issues with this the piston aligners are perfect so you can shoot this in any angle you want to that's probably the biggest part of this is it's so custom timed that's why it took me three weeks to make it instead of just like overnight because this thing is just so well built in my opinion. I'm quite proud of it. And it's just insanely compact. It took me forever to compact this down. If you were to make get a cannoner to remake this, but not knowing uh, if you wanted them to do everything that this could do, but you wanted them to remake it from scratch, it would be like three times bigger. This thing is insanely tiny considering how good it is. And the only issue with this is it's unfortunately slightly higher than it needs to be just because of the sand. But you, can, you don't have to stack 10 sand if you don't want to. But <laughs> you're probably not worrying about height if you are building this anyway. But anyway, let's take a look at this thing in action. So what we have here is our land cannon and what we have here is a wall. And we're going to be destroying this wall with our cannon. So all we are going to be doing here is stacking the sand 10 high to this green block here. And then blowing through that. And then if you had like 10 walls, you would just repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat. If you had a one shot, you just fire it through. But anyway, for this, we're just going to be testing it with this. So for this, what you want to sand stack, you want the hammer on and you want the sand stacking on. So we want the hybrid off, which is off. And we've got com I've got conveniently placed signs around here for different redstone and bits you have to destroy for this. So now if we go around the back and press the button, the sand here should fall into the spot. The hammer should activate and then it should fire out like so and stack your sand. And this will do that at pretty much any height. It honestly doesn't matter which height it is. Unlike 80 stackers we have to build it at Y80, this thing can do it at pretty much any height. And as you can see, it just stacked 80 sand. So that's pretty impressive. Now for scattering, we don't actually need, we do not need the hammer or the, ha the hammer or the sand stacking off. So we're just going to turn all of these on and or off and activate this and for slab bust you would have the hammer and you would have the scatter on so there's a lot of different combinations of things you can do to do different things but for hybrid we will actually use the same block here or the same department there's two ways you can do this the first one is by placing sand on top of here which i prefer to do or you can go ahead and place sand place sand here at like so and that'll fall into the cobweb but it's really preference it doesn't really matter but since we already have that in there, I'm going to activate it. So we press the button now. TNT should fire out of here, out of this middle bit, which is our scatter. This should push through and just hybrid. As you can see, that just absolutely demolished the wall and created a huge gap. And if we were to fire this again, we would be able to obliterate the next wall, followed by all the rest. And if they have a regen wall, I'm going to do another video later on on how you can actually raid a regen wall with this, because it is actually possible to do that. But anyway, that is really awesome, and you're probably wondering how does this thing work, and how can you make it. So anyway, now let's get on with the redstone. But before I do, if you want to download this world to test it out in your own world, you can. You'll have this wall, and you'll have this cannon. Just to prove that I'm not making this stuff up, just make sure you play with this cannon either on a server that has 1.7 TNT mechanics or you have or you are on a single player world that's on 1.7 but anyway now onto the redstone 
So now onto the redstone, there's a lot of stuff that's happening now in quick succession from the very moment you press the button, so hopefully I can explain this quite well, but there is a lot that is happening. So the first thing that happens when you press the button, it activates this back dispenser, and then 8 ticks after that, all these other dispensers activate after that. And the reason for that is because this thing needs to activate first because it is firing here. And this is normally like your compression bit, this will push all the TNT or propellant right up to this lab, but I didn't have that much space. The whole aim of this lean at our trick cannon was to make it as small as possible. So I didn't really cut any corners because this doesn't affect it in any way. But it does make it smaller. So all the TNT goes here. The only issue, which isn't really an issue, is the TNT that comes from these, the scatter actually goes slightly forward. Like half a block forward when this is actually fired. And we have that slab just to stop it. It doesn't actually affect the cannon at all. But it's just something to watch out for if you see it in action. So what happens after that, while all this TNT is just laying here in the chamber, what happens is this piston gets activated and that will push this cobweb which will then retract after 10 ticks because of the button and then all the sand will fall down into this chamber and as you can see this slab is at the top to represent where you need to place your sand when you're placing it and then this will go into the sand chamber so that way it can just chill there until it needs to be used. And after this, the, the repeaters go off in two directions. One goes along here and one goes along the back. And this just act pushes the sand out later on. And this one goes along here and activates the scatter. So if you are using the scatter, as soon as it gets here, the TNT will start firing out here. So that way you may have uh, one pro tip, but do not sand stack and scatter at the same time. It does not work well. But this will activate the scatter, it does not actually activate the piston, it only activates the scatter. And then that will be chilling there while this is chilling here. And then after that, sometime it will fire. But what happens after that is you get a delay that goes all the way along here. But before anything actually happens, what happens next in this chain of events is there is a signal that goes into this block which turns off this redstone torch, which then goes up to this redstone torch and down to the side one here which activates these four dispensers and these one act activate all these up here and this activates 12 dispensers in total because if you are trying to stack sand you need to use a calculation of the sand times 1.151 and that will get the amount of the dispensers you need or amount of TNT you need and your hammer to actually fire this. So that's why we have 12 dispensers and we are stacking 10 sand. So that works really well because now this will be chilling just on top of this piston and what will happen is by the time this gets up along here we have to add an extra repeater or else it will not fire at the right time and it will screw up everything so this tiny little extra piece is here. And then this will deactivate the piston for 10 ticks because of the button. And then it's very important that it's actually a stone button. If you use a wooden button, it'll screw everything up. So then this will chill back here. And then when everything else fires, this will push forward. But what happens after that is this goes under here. And what happens before the piston liners activate is this back compressor bit fires. This goes all the way up here. And there's an 8 tick delay in between this firing off and this firing off and this is because we need the pistons to extend and retract before they activate and the reason for this is TNT is 0.98 blocks wide so we need the TNT to go into the very edge of the corner or else if you are firing this at extreme long ranges which you can do with this cannon it will screw up the trajectory and it could be one block off and then your sand may not stack, which is a huge issue, and then you won't be able to raid the base. So it's a huge, huge, huge issue that I've managed to solve. And that activates, and after that, the, this fires off. And when this fires off, the sand here will be pushed either one tick, one tick before this fires off, and this will be fired. So this, will, this piston and this piston will be pushed at the same time, one tick before all of these dispensers fire off. So they will be floating in mid -air. So this block, all the TNT will be clumped in this top barrel here and all the sand will be in this barrel here. And the reason for this is we need the TNT to be one block above the sand so that way it can stack it down. And also you're probably wondering why is it set to free ticks and not one? It's because if we have it set any lower then it won't actually stack the sand properly. But the one great thing about this is if it's on free it hits the wall, it goes down slightly and then it still stacks the sand. But you could fire this 10 chunks and you will not have to change the repeater because the TNT will still slope down ever so slightly and stack the sand perfectly. So you do not have to worry about that at all. As soon as you build this cannon, the only thing you want to do is check that you haven't mucked up anything and then just make sure that you 
destroy the appropriate levers or sand or sand. Repeaters like this because we couldn't find a redstone that needed destroyed. So I've got a repeater that you store in seed. And all of this happens in very quick succession, so that way it can create a really, really strong cannon. And as you can see, we have a tiny barrel. We don't need any bigger than this, because this thing is extremely accurate anyway, and you really only need one block in front of it. But you see all these people with insanely long barrels, and there's no real need. So anyway, now that this is done, let's get on with the tutorial. So now onto the tutorial, what you're going to need is you're going to need a 6x12 area and this iron, repre iron and gold represents all the places you're going to build on with the glass representing free blocks in case you need the extra space for some reason. And as you can see, it's actually quite a small space to work on. It's really small for actually a cannon of this, well, criteria, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, this middle gold bit here is going to be the barrel with this back bit here being the back of the barrel and this very front bit being the front of the barrel. And that's just the rest of it. But anyway, what you're going to need is you're going to need some building blocks, some slabs, some redstone, 24 repeaters, 6 redstone torches, 50 dispensers, 7 pistons, a comparator, a water bucket, and a stone button, as well as some sand, cobwebs, and of course TNT. And also, if you want to make it easier on yourself, or when you're changing over from hybrid scatter and sand stacking, you can use some signs and a lever if you need to. So the first thing you're going to be doing is building the barrel and the chamber. So what you want to do is come around the black here and place down two dispensers like so, and then place two blocks either side of them. After that, you then want to place a 2x4 area of dispensers like so on either side. So you'll have eight dispensers in total on each side. And then after that, you are going to go up, leave a ear gap block like so, and then you want to place two dispensers along here like so, and then you want to place another 2x4 grid of dispensers like so. And this gives you an absolute ton of power for when you're firing this thing. You could just use the bottom dispensers, but this more than doubles it, and you'll have no problem shooting as far as you need to, unless someone has an absolutely ridiculous base. But I'm pretty sure if there is a problem with this cannon, I doubt it will be ranged. So the next thing you want to do is just place water down here, all this will do is it will allow you to bring it all the way up to the very edge here. And what you want to do next is place a piston here, and this will be for your piston liner. And after that, you want to just place some blocks on either side, and a slab here, and a slab in front of here. After that, you want to place your second piston here, which will be your other piston liner, and then some blocks here. After that, you want to place a dispenser here, and one on top of that, if you place some temporary blocks around it. And this is going to be your main scatter dispenser. So after that, you want to then place a block here and you can place your cobwebs in now but this is going to be your pistons that are going to be used for your sand stacking so you want to place two along here and you want to place one piston along the side here which is going to be your one that breaks the cobwebs after that you just want to place some blocks along here and then close off the actual chamber so you want to leave this block open because the sand is going to be going all the way up here quite a wee distance so after that you want to we are then going to be making the chamber for the actual hammer. So what you want to do is you want to bring this up by one block. So if this is here, you want the top of the chamber to be at this level. So then we are going to place a block here and a piston on the side like so. So after you've done that, you can then cover up the edges and then place blocks like this along the barrel so that way you can actually finish the barrel and it's straight like so. So now that you've done that, we can start placing down all our dispensers, and we're going to be placing it straight on top of the actual piston. So you want to place two along here, like so, and then you just want to fill up these blocks on the side of glass or something, and then you want to place two more dispensers up here on both sides. And these will be your 12 main dispensers, and just for easy future reference, you just want to place some blocks along here with redstone on top of them, so that way they can be easily activated next time. And also, while we are here, you might as well place a block down here and a block down here with redstone all the way along these dispensers and a block here just for when we activate these dispensers and down at the bottom here, redstone there and redstone going all the way along here and one here so it activates the piston and one along here. So now we have made the main part of the barrel. So now we're going to be placing down the input and building the back of the cannon. So also one thing you want to do is actually make this a slab because we'll be taking an input from the bottom. So now what you want to do is you want to go up three blocks and grab your button. If I could actually grab it. 
and place it on the side like so and after you've done that you want to then place redstone on the top like so with a block along here and redstone here. This is so it can activate this block very first. Then after that you want to then, oh, not do that. You want to place two blocks along here with one up the top and another one down here with two more blocks going under like so. You want to place two redstone repeaters set to four ticks lay here with a piece of redstone there with two redstone repeaters going into the back here. Now we're going to be taking this input all the way to the back of our cannon. So you, what you want to do is destroy your temporary block you placed earlier, place a repeater here and place a block here. Also if you want to you can place your lever here for future reference and place your sign somewhere around here just so it's easier to reference later on. But anyway you want to place a redstone torch here, then you want to place redstone there and redstone repeaters all the way along the bo bottom here till you get past the very last dispenser. And then what you want to do is you want to place a block here and a block here with a repeater set to two ticks delay here and a redstone torch on top of it. So this will activate the bottom one, but since it's not activating the top one, you'll need to place a block on top. So now what we'll do is hook this up to the dispensers and the comparator. So the first thing you want to do is place a block here and you want to place a temporary block along here with one underneath. And then you want to destroy your temporary block and place a block redstone along here and here. After that, you want to place some blocks going all the way along here with four redstone repeaters set to four ticks lay here. And then you want the very end one to be a comparator set to three ticks lay. After that, you want to place two blocks along the top there and then redstone along the sides like here and this will create your comparator. What you want to do after this is come down to this side here, place a block along the side here and then place another one down here and then this will connect up all of your redstone. You also want to place a block here to cut off the redstone. So this doesn't come around here and create an infinite loop which will constantly power your redstone which you don't want. But now when the button gets pressed and it goes along here it will activate all these dispensers simultaneously and go off to the comparator. So now we are going to be hooking this up to the top hammer. So what you want to do is place a block here with a block in front of it and you want to place a redstone repeater set to free text layer with a redstone torch here. Then you want to place a block here with a slab along the top along the top here with a block in here. After that you want to place a redstone torch on here and you want to place a block here so when you place your redstone here and here it won't cut off this. After that you want to place a redstone torch here and you'll be done. And also if you have filled up any of these dispensers with TNT then that's not a good idea. It's not a good idea at all and if you've got this far you've probably realized an issue by now but it's just because when you're placing your redstone torches like this, they activate for one tick, so they will activate all the redstone. And also, one thing you've probably noticed is I don't use water and everything. It's because if you build this properly, it is completely safe, and water actually can distort the TNT. But anyway, now on to the next bit. So now we're going to be hooking this up to the main hammer. So what you want to do is place blocks along here, with another block there, and place three redstone repeaters set to four ticks delay going in from here and when you have a comparator that goes straight into here even if it is infinitely ticking it will actually have a solid signal unless you are three blocks away from the comparator that's why we can have this thing here create an infinite clock but if we had this only too long then it wouldn't make an infinite clock so this becomes a solid beam instead of a ticking beam which is very useful because it means we can create a longer signal without having more repeaters and taking out more space so what you want to do now is place a block there and a block here but we do not want this redstone to activate this this piston because we need one extra tick of delay so what you want to do is bring the redstone round place a redstone repeater on one tick and then grab a redstone torch and place it along the back here so now we're going to be hooking this up to the piston liner so what you want to do is place a block here place redstone along here get a redstone repeater set to four ticks lay second one set to three ticks and then you want to place a piston or a sticky piston here and you want to grab some sand so you can make this into a monostable circuit which will then have a one tick output so that way this will activate on for a moment like one second and then deactivate so after that you are good to go also what you want to do here is what you don't have to do but i'd recommend that you have some sort of transparent block to stop the barrel so i would place one there and one just along here and along here you can have glass, you can use slabs, you can use whatever you want as long as it's transparent and it honestly doesn't have to be there. It's just so the blocks don't go flying too far forward. Finally, we're going to be hooking up the scatter to the actual, or the comparator up to the actual scatter. So what we want to do is place a slab here so that way it can stand, it can go up here. You can use glowstone if you want, but I just prefer using slabs. And then you want to place a block here. 
So now you have essentially finished your cannon and what you want to do now is if you want to you can place a sign along down the bottom here which is for your lever. You can place one along the side here for your sand stacker. You can place one up here for your repeater and you can place a sign down here for your hybrid. So the redstone will be this one, the repeater will be this one, the redstone for the sand stacking will be this one and then you can use a repeater or a redstone torch here just so that way it can activate this. Uh, if you do place a redstone torch here, it has a sort of weird thing because it turns off this top one, but it will stay on. But when you get rid of it, it'll be off for a tick. But luckily, it doesn't actually affect anything. But that's just one little nice thing. So now you have finished your lean ad archer cannon, and all you have to do now is fill up all the dispensers with TNT and fill up the sand stacking bit with cobwebs and sand, and you are good to go. You'll have yourself a working lean ad archer cannon, and you can show off to all your friends how good of a cannoner you are, and then just rip for any base and get absolutely rich on whatever server you're on. So one thing to note also is there is a world download in the description if you want to check out this instead of building it, but you probably would have done this or you wouldn't be at the end of the episode by now. And another thing is, if you are planning on using this cannon, you can use it on lots of servers, including mine. It uses 1.7 TNT mechanics, and it's just a really, really strong cannon. But anyway, goodbye from TNT Madness.